Hello everyone. In today's video, we will be talking about scale. Yesterday we talked about coordinates, which help us understand maps, and today we will continue learning about things that will help us become capable of understanding more maps. So here on my screen, you can see right now a map of Greece, but as you can imagine, of course, this map is not actually the size of the entire country. It's actually much, much smaller, of course. It's as if we are looking at it uh, from space. It's as if we shrunk it down so it could fit on our screen, so we can make some use of it. For it to be use of us, for it to be of use to us, however, uh, there needs to be a connection between the distances on the map and the distances in real life. They need to be equivalent. If that is true, then we say that the map is made to scale. This map and every map has a scale to which it is made. In this map, you can see the scale right here. Let's see what this means. <clears throat> all right. First of all, we don't use this bottom part at all. So this part right here, we don't use it at all because it shows the distances in miles and only the Americans use miles. Uh, in Greece, we use kilometers like pretty much the rest of the world. So this bottom part is totally useless to us. We use only the part that shows us distances in kilometers. Okay? So Let's see what this means. If we take a ruler and we measure the distances here, what uh, we can see is that one centimeter on this map, you can see the distance from zero to one, one centimeter. It says 50. And from zero to two, it says 100. And from 0 to, to 3, it says 150. And from 0 to 4, it says 200 kilometers. That's the scale of the map. What this means is that for every 1 centimeter on this map, every distance that I measure on this map that is equal to 1 centimeter, that is equivalent to 50 kilometers in real life, okay? Uh, so four centimeters is four times that. Four times 50 is 200. And so that's why you see at the four centimeter mark, you see 200 kilometers. So let's see an example of, an example for us. Let's say I measure the distance from Athens to another city on this map. Okay, so I'm going to measure the distance from Athens to, where should we say? Let's say Kozani, which would be right here. As you can see, and I, I shouldn't have this thing. If I turn it around a little bit so that you can see the map better. You can see that this distance from Athens to Kozani is about six centimeters, right? Okay, well, since one centimeter is 50 kilometers, then six centimeters will be six times that. So in reality, in real life, that is equal to 300 kilometers. That's the scale of the map. That's what the scale of the map helps us do. All right, so another example, let's say we measure the distance between Athens and Rhodes.
All right. Now, if you look here, Rhodes is at about eight and a half centimeters away. So that would be 8.5, right? What that means is that since uh, this was Pozani, by the way, and for Rhodes, we say that since one centimeter in real life is 50 kilometers, then, no, sorry, since one centimeter on the map is 50 kilometers, then the 8.5 centimeters on the map are uh, in real life 8.5 times 50, which gives us 425 kilometers. And that's about right. That's about the distance between Athens and Rhodes. Okay, but here's the problem. Let's say I change maps. Let's say I take away the map of Greece and I bring out the map of Europe. Okay, and now I'm going to measure the distance. Here's Athens, here's Rhodes. You can see already that the distance is much, much smaller now, right? It's less than two centimeters now. So what happened? Uh, did we do something wrong? Are the maps wrong? No. What has happened here is that uh, this map, although it's the, it's about the same area as the map of Greece, so uh, it covers basically most of our screen, doesn't take up more room than that. The real life area that it shows is much, much, much bigger. So even though it takes about the same space as our map of Greece, right? This map of Greece here on this map is only about, it only shows about this big of an area. So you can see how much more area this map needs to show on the same amount of space. So it does that by being made on a different scale. This map has a different scale than the previous map because it shows a different amount, a uh, different amount of area on this on about the same amount of space. And you can see that scale by taking the ruler to it. The scale of this map is up here, and if we take a ruler to it, you can see that on this map, every one centimeter is 250 kilometers in real life. About 250. So even though the distance from Athens to Rhodes here is much smaller than in the previous map, if we apply the scale of this map, then we will find the same real life distance. So uh, this scale shows that um, we say that the scale is one to 250 uh, kilometers. One centimeter to 250 kilometers. Um, If we apply that, let's say we want to find the distance between Paris and another city. I would measure that with my ruler. Let's say the distance between Paris and oh, and what city? Zagreb, right there. That's four centimeters away, just four centimeters on this map. But we said that one centimeter on this map is 250 kilometers. Mm -hmm. 
that means that four centimeters on the map will be four times that, which means that the real life distance is 1,000 kilometers. In the next example, uh, I want to talk about something that is usually not shown to scale, although it should be. And that is the solar system. Now, usually when you're shown images of the solar system, you see images like this. And these images are wrong because in these images, you see the sun here right at the center of the solar system. And then you see the rest of the planets. And what it looks like is that Jupiter, let's say, is almost as big. It's actually it looks almost bigger than the sun. Saturn looks like it's almost as big as the sun. Here you can see Earth, it's about, let's say, half its size. Uh, if we could shrink the solar system down and make it so that, let's say, the sun was this big, then the planets would be way smaller than they are shown on this image. Earth would be about the size of this red dot that's shown here in the middle here. And they would actually be also, the planets would be much, much further apart. So this image is not made to scale, and neither for the sides of the planets nor the distances between them. So it is not to scale. This image is made to scale, when it at least when it comes to the size of the planets. So you can see here, what this image is telling us is that, okay, if the Earth was shrunk down, if the entire planet was shrunk down to be the size of this right here, this little blue-green dot, okay, then look at the size of the sun. It's so enormous that it doesn't even fit on the image. Then this would be the size of Jupiter and this would be the size of Saturn. Now, they are much bigger than that, than us. They don't come anywhere close to the size of the sun. So this is made to scale. And now look at the previous Im image again. See, there's a huge difference, right? Here again, Jupiter is almost the size of the sun. Whereas here, it is much, much, much smaller. Now for uh, an image of the solar system to be made uh, to scale, uh, when it comes to the distances between the planets. Uh, unfortunately, if we were to do that, they wouldn't really be visible on the screen. <clears throat> They'd have to be really, really far apart. So, uh, in the next example, I want to talk about a difference between what we saw up until now, which was the maps. Uh, so, here in the maps, what we show, what we what we saw basically was huge distances shrunk down so they could fit on our screen. So distances from one city to another uh, shrunk down so that we could fit them on our screen. Uh, so that might make you think that, okay, scale is only for when I, I want to uh, represent something that is really big, but I want to make it fit on my screen. That's not necessarily the case could also be that I want to show something that is really, 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 really small, so small that I can't really see it with just my eyes. And I might need something like a microscope. So here, for example, in this image, you can see a single grain of salt. Now, of course, uh, and salt meaning the kind that you put on your food. Uh, one single grain of it. Now, of course, you can see a grain of salt with your eyes, yeah, but you can't see it up close like this. This is what it would look like if you looked at it through a microscope. And this image, of course, a grain of salt is not that big. In reality, it's... What's the size of a grain of salt? Is it this big? It's not even that big. It's much less. It's about that big, right? So this image, instead of being, instead of the real image, uh, 
the reality basically being shrunk down like the maps uh in this uh case it has been zoomed in uh so that to make reality seem uh bigger than it actually is in this image in the previous images in the maps A centimeter on the map was the, was equivalent to 50 kilometers in real life, which is much, much, much more, right? It's a much greater distance. It's a much greater length. But in this image, it's the other way around. In this image, if we look at the scale, one centimeter is equal to 33 micrometers. To give you an idea of how small micrometers are, um, <clears throat> imagine that I took the distance between the zero and one here on the screen, right? Zero and one, and I cut that distance up. I cut that distance up into ten thousand equal pieces. One of those pieces is a micrometer. Again, ten thousand pieces okay here they're cut into just 10 and you can barely see them apart imagine trying to cut them up into 10,000 pieces that would not really be visible with the eye <clears throat> so what this is saying is that for every one centimeter on this image that's 33 micrometers in reality so what we could do is let's say we wanted to measure how long is the grain of salt from one side to the other? And you can see that it's about 13 centimeters. Well, if we use the scale that we just talked about, we would say that, okay, since it's 13 centimeters here, and since every one centimeter is 33 micrometers, and I would have to do 13 times 33 micrometers. 33 times uh, 13 would give me how much? And so 429. So this would be equal this distance, the length of the salt, and the length of the grain of salt from side to side would be 429 micrometers. And again, I'm going to say this one more time. Distance from zero to one on this screen is 10 thousand micrometers so imagine how small this is lastly i want to talk about how we can create our own scale so here what we're going to do is uh, we don't know the scale of this image but of course uh, an ant is not that big we know that in reality the length of an average ant is about half a centimeter, so let's say five millimeters, right? Now, it differs from ant to ant, but let's just say five millimeters. That's an average ant, okay? So what that means is that if I were to measure the distance, the length of the ant on this image, I could say that, okay, this length, sorry, this length right here on this image is equal is equivalent to five millimeters in real life okay so then i could th that's my scale 
for this image. Okay, so I could use this scale to then go on and measure other things like I could measure the length of its legs or its antennas or if I could have more ants, I would use this scale. Again, that this length is equivalent to five millimeters in real life to find other distances. Okay, so that will be all for today. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the video, and or you can discuss them on the live meetings uh, on Tuesday and Thursday. Um, Thursday now. So I will see you guys again on Friday. Have a good day.